So hey guys, today I am heading to the uh, Cobb County auctions um, to kind of see what we've got going on here. Uh, see if there's anything worth picking up um, and maybe wholesaling, flipping over to somebody else to renovate or uh, buy some stuff to hold. So I'm downtown Marietta and uh, over here at the courthouse. So we're going to check some things out and see what we can make happen today. Not a lot of folks out here today. all right so we are leaving this auction and uh, we were able to uh, bid on a couple and snatch one but uh, these people were hot and heavy on this October 1st and so now we're about to uh, head on to the rest of our day but um, it was crowded it was very competitive it was hot people were getting frustrated the criers were not <laughs> yelling loud enough people couldn't hear people had side conversations people let their phones ring it's like you know in those environments you got to be quiet as possible because you can't hear anything but um, I think it was a successful day nonetheless and uh, just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about that auction process um, I would have recorded a little bit more but it was just daggone hot and people kept bumping into me which would have messed up my camera <laughs> angles but anyway it was a good turnout that they had a Cobb County made a whole lot of money today for sure um, but uh, that is it for right now all right. All right. So it's the end of the day and I wanted to take the time to just expand a little bit more on the auction process, uh, specifically here in Cobb County. So today was the October 1st, uh, foreclosure auctions, um, here in Cobb County. Um, the, the auctions are held on the steps um, of the courthouse and uh, you literally are bidding outside in the hot sun or rain or cold um, whatever is going on the first uh, Tuesday of each month and uh, we attended both auctions the tax sale as well as the regular foreclosure sale um, wasn't a ton of people there but then as like time progressed and you know houses that people really wanted started you know coming up for auction um it got really really tight we were sitting in there like sardines you know people uh trying to bid on these properties so um when you buy a house through non-judicial foreclosure here in georgia um you buy it with all fault at the courthouse steps meaning that anything that has to do with that property if there's tenants in it or if it's abandoned or if there's other liens on it or anything you buy those properties with all the faults on there so so it means that you need to go and research the property um, prior to the foreclosure sale. 
So you want to drive her by it. You want to see if it's occupied. You want to see if the utilities are on. You want to do a lien search. Um, you can find your favorite attorney or your favorite title examiner and pay them for their time to do the research. Or you could become a member of GSCCA, which is a database here in Georgia where you can go and see if there's been any other recorded liens against the property. So, um, so the auction again is the first Tuesday of every month, unless that Tuesday is on a holiday, then it is that Wednesday and they do their auctions between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, you don't know the order in which the uh, bids are going to come up or the properties are going to come up for bid. Um, so you kind of have to stand there and it's very crowded as you saw. Um, and you have to listen because there's a lot of people that are around having all these side conversations. So you have to listen to see who the crier is. If it's auction.com, they're going to have the list of the foreclosures in order of which to do it. They'll have a board that'll show what's being auctioned next and they'll update the board. Um, the tax sale is a little bit different. You don't really know what order that they're going to be in. So you have to sit and listen. So if you're trying to bid on both, you have to listen to like the auction.com people who will have their table out. They're usually dressed in green. Then you have different attorneys that are called criers that are scattered throughout the crowd. And then you have the Cobb County tax um, auction going on all at the same time. So you have to have a really good ear for who is crying out what, when, because you could literally be in two auctions at one time. If there's something in the tax sale going on that you're bidding on that you wanted to bid on at the same time where the um, uh, regular foreclosures um, are going on. The difference between the tax foreclosures and the regular foreclosures is that if you're buying a home at the foreclosed steps and that person is behind on their mortgage and hasn't paid, um, you buy that house. You get the house that day. You pay that day. You pay right then and there. You'll have to have your funds and good funds, which is a cashier's check um, for the amount that you want to bid several people will take several different cashier checks in different amounts because typically you're not just bidding on one property. There might be a half dozen properties that you are looking to um, bid on that day. Um, it's a good idea to try to investigate and see how many properties you want to bid on because you won't win them all. No one ever does. And you'll do your comps, look at the tax value, look at the condition of the house, have your favorite realtor um, help you with that or your favorite attorney, uh, real estate attorney in specifics um, to investigate the properties that you want to bid on and be prepared to go in higher than what the loan balance is um, if you really want the property and you have to pay them then, right then and there. On the tax sale, the non-judicial tax sale, it's different. So you bid on and the taxes on the property. So they're selling the, the, the tax lien. They are not selling the property itself. So there's a very distinct difference. At the regular foreclosure, you're buying the house right there on the steps. At the tax sale, which happens three times a year in Cobb County, I believe October 1st, then there's another one in April, and I believe one in June or July. I think it's June. And you buy, you know, you bid on your tax, the tax. So if someone owes, say, $5,000 in back taxes, that usually is the beginning price. So you bid, say, 5000 for that, and then they do in increments of $1,000. So you can do 6000 7000 8000 Sometimes people will say that they really want it, and they know what the property is worth, um, that they'll bid, you know, $50,000 or they'll go so far and beyond, uh, which usually cuts out a lot of the other buyers. But you don't get possession of the property that day. What you do get is the ownership of the lien. You own the lien, not the real property that it's attached to. Um, you have to give the homeowner here in Cobb County um, one year to pay off that or redeem the tax sale or redeem that tax lien that you have, that, that you now own. And you can make up to 20% of the tax lien um, as profit. So if a, uh, say someone's taxes are, let's call it $1,000, um, and they go a year, uh, say they go 11 months and 30 days, they can come and redeem the tax lien against their own property um, and then pay you 20%, which in that case, you'll make $200 on your $1,000 investment. If they do not redeem the taxes, then what you're going to do is initiate a tight, it was called a quiet title action, which means it's a, like a court action. And then you'll have to essentially just foreclose on that owner if they don't pay up within the year. And then you get the deed to the actual property at that time. Okay. So 
again, foreclosure sale, you buy the property right there. You buy the whole kit and caboodle. You pay right then and there at the tax sale. Um, I have seen um, primarily in Fulton County that if it like goes up in the really high numbers, like a million, million, two million, three million, four, sometimes they'll suspend the auction right in the middle to verify that all those people bidding that high have the cash on hand via cashier's check on hand to pay those funds. And they'll, they will verify those to make sure those are real cashier's check. You have to show government ID. You have to give your address. You have to bid in your own name. You can title it into a business name or into a uh, incorporation or an LLC, but you have to uh, be identified as the public buyer for that property. So, and you have to have that money on you. If you're doing the tax lien, you buy, you bid on the tax lien, and then in Cobb County, they give you till two o'clock to come in and go to the bank and then cash, you know, pay cash, a cashier's check or money order for the lien. You buy the lien, not the house. After a year and say a day, you can go down and then uh, do a quiet title action on the property, foreclose on the original owner, and then take possession of the property if they have not redeemed that tax certificate from you prior to one year. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions about the process or if you're interested in going down there and um, you know kind of want some tips, um, let me know. I'll give you three right now. Um, three of the tips is get there early, register early, okay? Um, this is when you're at the auction, register early, bring a chair because you just don't know when your property is going to come up. If you're doing the regular foreclosure, if it's a tax sale, like today, there might've only been about 15 properties. They got through most of the properties in about two hours. So standing there for that long, if you could take it, you know, lean against the wall or whatever, you'll be fine. Um, bring some cold water with you would be another tip. If, the, if it's over, like today it was 96 degrees out there, bring some water or a hat or some type of covering because you will get very hot and as this as the more popular properties start to get bidded on people will that come in closer and closer and closer and you'll feel like uh, sardines so if you're one of those people that are claustrophobic you want to make sure you get there early so you can uh, register early and then stand at the top of the stairs in front of with everybody their back to you so you don't feel so claustrophobic um, and make sure you potty before you get there because you don't want to have to go take a potty break and your property comes up and you miss the opportunity. There are no bathrooms out there, so you'll have to like leave that vicinity to go find a restroom. So make sure you empty those bladders before you go. Hydrate um, if it's a hot summer day or bring you some coffee and a coat if it happens to be um, in the winter time that you're going. Bring a little chair with you. Um, and then other tips that I just mentioned, make sure you research the property. Bring the list of the properties that you want to bid in. Write your notes as to where you want to come in on price because I guarantee you, you're going to feel the itch to want to go higher than what you initially said you wanted. So make sure you keep that in mind or just bid yourself lower. So say if the property is $1,000 and you know you're willing to go up to 10, just write down like eight on your paper because you'll get the feeling when you're there and you start looking around, you'll start seeing people kind of shift when they when the crier starts calling out the house. They go through the legal description of the house, the owners and all this, the meets and bounds, the legal description, all that stuff so you know that your property is about to come up and you'll start seeing people kind of walk up because they hear the address they start walking up and beginning the bid um, you will get a bid number and uh, when they say hey you know opening bid is thousand dollars five thousand fifty thousand two hundred fifty thousand million dollars whatever the opening bid is you raise your card you say your number and and the bid, and you have to shout out what it is it's not a silent bid where you just like hold up a paddle and they're like, okay, 56, you know, no, you have to shout it out. $56,000, number 90. If you're number 90 on the registration, you have to shout it out. But otherwise the crier can't hear you with all those people out there. And they will definitely not see you because it's a sea of people that's sitting in front of them. So I hope that gave you some insight. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching. If you've got questions, let me know and I'll talk to you soon.